Chapter 4 is entitled, Unto You a Savior. The King of Glory stooped low to take humanity. Rude and forbidding were his earthly surroundings. His glory was veiled that the majesty of his outward form might not become an object of attraction. He shunned all outward display. Riches, worldly honor, and human greatness can never save a soul from death. Jesus purposed that no attraction of an earthly nature should call men to his side. Only the beauty of heavenly truth must draw those who would follow him. The character of the Messiah had long been foretold in prophecy, and he desired men to accept him upon the testimony of the word of God. The angels had wondered at the glorious plan of redemption. They watched to see how the people of God would receive his Son, clothed in the garb of humanity. Angels came to the land of the chosen people. Other nations were dealing in fables and worshiping false gods. To the land where the glory of God had been revealed and the light of prophecy had shone, the angels came. They came unseen to Jerusalem, to the appointed expositors of the sacred oracles and the ministers of God's house. Already to Zacharias, the priest, as he ministered before the altar, the nearness of Christ's coming had been announced. Already the forerunner was born, his mission attested by miracle and prophecy. The tidings of his birth and the wonderful significance of his mission had been spread abroad. Yet Jerusalem was not preparing to welcome her Redeemer. With amazement the heavenly messengers beheld the indifference of a people whom God had called to communicate to the world the light of sacred truth. The Jewish nation had been preserved as a witness that Christ was to be born of the seed of Abraham and of David's line. Yet they knew not that his coming was now at hand. In the temple the morning and the evening sacrifice daily pointed to the Lamb of God. Yet even here was no preparation to receive him. The priests and teachers of the nation knew not that the greatest event of the ages was about to take place. They rehearsed their meaningless prayers and performed the rites of worship to be seen by men. But in their strife for riches and worldly honor, they were not prepared for the revelation of the Messiah. The same indifference pervaded the land of Israel. Hearts selfish and world engrossed were untouched by the joy that thrilled all heaven. Only a few were longing to behold the unseen. To these, heaven's embassy was sent. Angels attend Joseph and Mary as they journey from their home in Nazareth to the city of David. The decree of imperial Rome for the enrollment of the peoples of her vast dominion has extended to the dwellers among the hills of Galilee. As in old time, Cyrus was called to the throne of the world's empire that he might set free the captives of the Lord, so Caesar Augustus is made the agent for the fulfillment of God's purpose in bringing the mother of Jesus to Bethlehem. She is of the lineage of David, and the son of David must be born in David's city. Out of Bethlehem, said the prophet, shall he come forth that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from the days of eternity. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 in the margin. But in the city of their royal line, Joseph and Mary are unrecognized and unhonored. Weary and homeless, they traverse the entire length of the narrow street, from the gate of the city to the eastern extremity of the town, vainly seeking a resting place for the night. There is no room for them at the crowded inn. In a rude building where the beasts are sheltered, they at last find refuge, and here the Redeemer of the world is born. Men know it not, but the tidings fill heaven with rejoicing. With a deeper and more tender interest, the holy beings from the world of light are drawn to the earth. 
the whole world is brighter for His presence. Above the hills of Bethlehem are gathered an innumerable throng of angels. They wait the signal to declare the glad news to the world. Had the leaders in Israel been true to their trust, they might have shared the joy of heralding the birth of Jesus. But now they are passed by. God declares, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3, and Psalms the 112th division, and verse 4. To those who are seeking for light, and who accept it with gladness, the bright rays from the throne of God will shine. 